Olochi to kick off. Game number six for the Penn State Nittany Lions for UMass. They are one and six going into today's game. And the return here by Singleton. He hangs on to the ball. He makes a cut. He's on his feet, but he's tripped up just shy of the 30-yard line. As expected, it's Singleton in the backfield. Play action. Aller stands, looks, surveys, and finally in the end throws it low. On second down, room to run for Singleton. The snap on third and a long one and a quick throw. Lambert Smith, and he catches a lot of his passes for first downs, and that's the case here. They're making sure Penn State is in the right position in the right play. Once again, Lambert Smith blocked well on the perimeter, ball over midfield, but short of a first down, as Drew Aller is most likely going to test them throughout this game. Here's one of those tests. Deep ball just overthrown. On third and two. And it's Singleton and a good push from the offensive line. You see him looking to the sideline. Everybody's pointing it out. They're getting the idea of the defense and getting this offense into the correct play. 12 personnel right now for Penn State. And in the backfield, and down goes Singleton. Nicely done by the Viper in this defense for UMass. That's Najee Logan. Logan has had three and a half tackles for loss this year. Officially, that was a gain of one. Now here's a throw inside, and it's a welcome back for Harrison Wallace. The ruling on the field That's... was a fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down and 10, UMass. That's the right correction. Thank you, Dean. That's just the second turnover this season for Penn State. Their first one on offense. The other was on special teams. So here's Tyson Pumachon and the UMass offense on the field and they look to go to Anthony Simpson on their first play and just about the 26 yard line it was first touched at the 25. Now this is going to be a deep ball and incomplete once again Simpson the target. The problem is, is you, they have not seen a defense like this Penn State defense. Look at the structure. They're OK. Manny Diaz is OK keeping them in one on one coverage. Another drop back and trouble denied Dennis Sutton. And then that ferocious Penn State defensive front collapses the pocket. And now a bobbled snap on the punt and a line drive by C.J. Kologi. And it will take a nice roll for UMass. Line drive punt, ball of the 33 for Penn State. Second series. And it's a running play to the 35-yard line, gain of two. Four receivers, but it's another play dialing up Nick Singleton's number. On third and a long three and looking for the tight end, Tyler Warren. Motion for Lambert Smith. And it is Lambert Smith on the jet sweep and Penn State transfer Tyler Rudolph. Back to throw Aller and a bullet pass over the middle and a late flag comes in. The pass is intended for Lambert Smith. Isaiah Rutherford on coverage and a penalty flag is down here on this second down play. Refer one. Referee is Jeff Servinsky, by the way. Pass interference. Defense number 12. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Includes an automatic first down. By the way, Lambert Smith has made two catches today. He's at 100 now in his career at Penn State. Deep ball by Aller, and there's some separation here on the route, looking for Harrison Wallace. Redshirt sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama. Singleton in trouble in the backfield, and down he goes. This is third and long. It's third down and 14 after the TFL and flush from the pocket and down goes Aller. He's grabbed first by J.B. Brown. But you got to give credit to J.B. Brown getting back there and making the play. J.B. Brown, one of a number of players who transferred to UMass from Arizona, where Don Brown was the defensive coordinator for one season in 2021. This is the first run for Karon Lynch Adams, who had 157 yards. Offensive coordinator Steve Kasula said completion percentage is a great stat. He's been smart with the football and accurate. And wrapped up, Abdul wow. Carter swallows up. It looks like a zero pressure look here, but they could drop out of it. Campiotti in motion. 
And it's a quick game pass. Anthony Simpson, Campiotti loses his block on the edge against pass defenses that he's coached, but certainly said it's important that these guys play to a high standard. They wanted to do that all year long, starting with the bowl game last year. Punt return. Oh, moves by Daquan Hardy. Daquan Hardy's still going. Daquan Hardy's got a convoy and going all the way to the end zone. Touchdown on the punt return, 55 yards. Hayden Saunders usually returns punts. Daquan Hardy's had a chance to return kickoffs a couple of times. Gabe Wosu, first time to see him kick off. And this is fielded by Greg DeWosier. DeWosier is hit in the open field. Anthony Simpson is in motion, and it was a rollout by Pumachan and a throw to him after Simpson caught the pass. Motion out of the backfield by Lynch Adams. Pumachan has the most time he's had to throw today and finds George Johnson the third. 16 yards, their 106th play of 10 plus yards this year, top 10 in the country. Pressure, oh, and down, go. oh, Pumachan able to get it away at the last second as he got the ball to Lynch Adams who made it back to the line of scrimmage. See Sean Harris Jr. in motion. And nothing opens up in the end for Lynch Adams. He told us this defense was smiling. They couldn't wait to get back on the field. And you're seeing that identity so far today. And here they come again. Flush from the pocket. Puma Sean. And it's a pass breakup. We've got to be aware of the problem players on Penn State's defense. <laughs> and then he listed off about nine or ten players. I got a hand cramp writing down all the names. Now it's Saunders back to return the punt. Hardy just had a punt return for touchdown that he's playing today. We'll see if he gets his first touch of the ball here in the last minute and a half of the quarter. He does, and does something with it. Allen still going. The pile is pushed past. Flip to Lambert Smith. Last player two here of this quarter. Katron Allen plunges off the right side on second down and one. They're going to snap it one more time. They appear to be prepared to do so. But we'll opt not to. The filling in for him, and he was talking to offensive line coach Phil Trotwine, just trying to focus on that communication and get something going to better protect you. Pass, Aller, and Katron Allen. Second down and short, and Aller's got a good pocket, and the pass is caught by Wallace, and he broke one tackle and almost another one. It's a first down. Was able to run away from Isaiah Rutherford. This ball is outside the 10-yard line. Pass caught, Theo Johnson makes a man miss, driven forward. Second down and short. Andrew Rappelier is in the game as the third tight end, and they push Drew Aller forward on the quarterback sneak. We've seen this run many, many times by Penn State, and in this case, it leads to Drew Aller's third rushing touchdown of the season. That was a crisp drive. Eight plays, 71 yards. A lot of Catron Allen on that drive, and it's finished off by a one-yard QB sneak by Drew Aller. As long as we don't make mistakes, we're going to win a lot of football games. Of course, they want to get the explosives, but they're doing it pretty well. Yes, you're watching one on the Big Ten Net Blue. Okay. <laughs> Here's Pumachon hit from behind. Down he goes. And that's tough for Pumachon with his recent knee injury. He throws the ball here to convert it. Quarterback now tight end Gino Campiotti. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 33. 15 yard penalty to be added to the end of the run. You gotta clean up some of those penalties, and they're, they're not terrible at it, but that's one you wanna avoid. There's a play fake, whoa, and Lynch Adams got belted. Simpson 
Still moving in motion. Second down from the 47 and another sack. Most in FBS, 14 different players with a sack. That sack is a loss of seven. Third and 17. Here's Greg DeWosier. CJ Kolochi punting. Caden Saunders is going to let this bounce, and it goes into the end zone. To have zero turnovers, zero interceptions, it shows maturity for a young quarterback. This is Katron Allen with a run up to the 25-yard line. Now there is the, the UConn was a tough one. Katron Allen picks up a first down, still going. Rutherford hangs on. You know, the good backs, they take a five-yard run, and they get you five yards. The great ones like Allen, they break a tackle and turn into an explosive. Now a throw and coming back to the ball, Trey Wallace. Allen's already had running plays of five and 17 yards on this drive to play Ohio State. Deep throw, looking for Lambert Smith. Marker. Pass interference. Defense number 12. Aller on the pass. Allen, a hole on second and short for a first down inside the 10. More Catron Allen. There's been a lot of him on this drive, and he finishes it off. It allows him to break tackles. It allows him to carry piles. And it's what makes him so special. After a nine-yard touchdown run by Catron Allen. Returning from the one-yard line, Greg DeWosier. Whoa. Oh! <laughs> a big hit. And they don't care about the elements. They're here to cheer on their, their team and cheer on with some pride. That looks like a lateral. It is a catch, and Mark Pope. Late flag has come in here on that run, uh, catch and run. Holding. Holding. Offense number nine. Oh, here's pressure. Adisa Isaac swallows up Puma John back at the three yard line. And they're playing like it so far today. And trying to establish a little bit more of a beachhead. This is the wrong end of the stadium, as you can hear, to be third and 26. Made a great tackle to start this whole sequence off in bad field position for the Minutemen. Kologi's punt. Daquan Hardy has a punt return of 56 yards for a touchdown today. Got a marker down. Got this play stops right at the 35 of UMass. No foul on the play. We're holding. Drew Aller's done a great job of operating this offense pre-snap. Yeah, you hear all the signal calling. Well, last drive was heavy on the Catron Allen. Now it's Nick Singleton. Those receivers down, you can't see them right there by the scoreboard. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Singleton, first down. <laughs> Graphic a moment ago. This has been all Singleton. They're softening him up with the run on this drive. Unique ability to snap the ball and pull. That's his super strength. That's yep. what Mike Yersich said about Hunter Norzad. Fourth straight run for Singleton. Get our center pulling around. It's unique and it's hard to stop as a defense. First and goal. Lambert Smith in the flat. Oh, off the hands of Theo Johnson. Third and goal. And that one's on the money. Tyler Warren, touchdown. Catches it, and he's in for a touchdown. Well, again, a lot of Singleton softening them up on the run. The drive ends. Wild game between Rutgers and Michigan State in Jersey. Big boot by Gabe Wosu. 
Pass to Tyler Warren for the score. And Pumachan. Karon Lynch Allen. Penn State sixth in the nation. They started the year seventh. Moved up to six a couple of weeks ago. And that is just nowhere to go for Lynch Adams. CJ Koloji, I wonder if that that surely must have been tipped. There is no foul for running into the kicker. The ball was tipped. The ruling on the field is that the kick touched a Penn State player. It was recovered by UMass. It's first down and 10 UMass. Wow. Okay. The second turnover of the day. One was on offense with a Trey Wallace fumble, and then one now on special teams. And so from the 50-yard line, now UMass, they have a chance in theory, but Adisa Isaac says, no, you don't have a chance. Down goes Pumachon, another sack by the Nittany Lions. Okay, I would have loved to see the two-minute offense, but I love watching Manny Diaz defense play. They're, they're just so talented, and, and UMass is cho choosing not to call a timeout here. I can't blame them. This has been tough sled, and you may just say, let's get into half because we've been going backwards facing this Penn State defense. Well, they're going to run one play here, and it's in the flat and incomplete. One last play here at the end of the first half. Karon Lynch Adams with a run. There's some breathtaking stuff that happens over the course of the game with the way they play. Here's the kickoff. UMass will opt for a fair catch, but they've got three tests of explosive plays in the running game, limit UMass explosive plays. That's an A+. Plus. Yep. And then what else can you do in the pass game along with Lambert Smith? Now here's UMass looking for an explosive. These running backs and tight ends, they got to try to chip the edge to take the pressure off this uh, offensive line. Play fake and throw and bobbled and dropped. UMass about to be 0 for 8 on third down. Yeah, have to count to one Mississippi, two Mississippi before you can rush. Fair catch, Daquan Hardy. That obviously is going to have enormous influence on the Big Ten and college football playoff picture. Dropped by Lambert Smith. Liam Clifford went in motion, and Aller throws the pass inside to Lambert Smith. It's a lot coming at you. And Allen is hit on that third down run. To throw on fourth down and two, or he'll step up and run. First down, a little more. And a good decision to run for the first down on fourth and two. Stepped up in the pocket. He sure UMass offside. A lot of time to throw, a lot of room for a throw and a catch and a touchdown for Theo Johnson. Safeties were wide. They were playing middle field open coverage. That's an easy read for Drew Aller to hit his tight end right down the pipe. Opportunity expanded for Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren this year. Brenton Strange on to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fair catch on the kickoff down to Brooke Fletcher. Receiving touchdown today for Theo Johnson is his first receiving touchdown of the season, by the way. Warren has five receiving touchdowns this year. Get your young backs going, because that'll benefit you once you get into play action. And this is play action here by UMass. Anthony Simpson. They won't throw it. They will run it. And it's Karon Lynch Adams on third down and 11. Left tackle Johnny Hazard had a good block to open up room for Lynch Adams. He's in trouble. 
ran out of the Cam Miller tackle and a big hit along the sideline by Zariah Fisher, defensive end. Defensive tackles played great against Northwestern two weeks ago. Disconcerting signals. Defense number 41. Oh, wow. mm. Five yard penalty, second down. As a defense, you got to be quiet. You can't try to mimic the snap count to get them to jump. Good job by the officials there identifying that. Penn State's a low penalty team, five for 44 on average, two for 20, the number today. That move the ball five yards forward. UMass's first third down conversion. Mm. They won't have another one. Devon Ellis. 300 pounder from Burtonsville, Maryland. Devon Ellis with that play. Nice punt by Kolochi. Caden Saunders seems to return. Broke two tackles. The punter Kolochi, or no, I'm sorry, that was the deep snapper, Ethan Dumont, who slowed him down. It's a good return by Saunders. After a 36-yard punt return from Caden Saunders, the ball at the 46 and ahead of steam. We're starting to see some changes on the offensive line. I noticed that Ola Fashinu is not in right now. Deep ball here for Aller, looking for Lambert Smith. There's a lot of bumping and jostling down the left side of the field. Rutherford made his mark in the only win for UMass this year with the pick six in the opener against New Mexico State. Singleton looking for something to open up. Patient run, still going. Gain of eight. Well, here's the throw, though, to the other direction! And it could have been a trio of touchdowns for the tight ends. Now on third and two, methodically. James Franklin wants to get those explosives going. Here's a chance for Theo Johnson in the flat. Up he goes, and in he goes! Stuck the landing! Two touchdowns today. Again, the first two receiving touchdowns for Theo Johnson this year. Kick operation has been good in bad conditions today as remaining in the third quarter of the game. Gabe Wosu with the kickoff. It's a touchback. I'm pretty sure he was the one. I, I lead up in the hole as a fullback, and he lit me up. Here's a throw by Pumachon and an incomplete, or I'm sorry, uh, Ahmad Haston is coming to the game, the backup. UMass went to the transfer portal to fortify the quarterback position now with Pumachon and Carlos Davis from Georgia Tech and Western Carolina, respectively. Haston is the future, a freshman from Palm Beach, Florida. I think they're bringing it. Haston got the ball out. It is caught by George Johnson, the third. Turns inside. Zachy Wheatley, that's a nice open field tackle to keep him com from converting to first down. Punt by C.J. Kolochi, that is a line drive, and Daquan Hardy can do something special again. He's got one punt return for a touchdown. If he can beat the punter and make it to the end zone, he's got two. And then they say, never get tackled by the punter. Okay? <laughs> they do you, say you, that, you yes. not get tackled by the punter. Sanders Sahadak with the extra point. And here's Gabe Wosu with the kickoff. 49-0. Return is coming for Sean Harris. And Harris. It'll be a point of pride in their special teams meeting tomorrow afternoon. Made a lot of big plays in his time at Penn State. Five interceptions in his career, forced fumble. Now two punt returns for touchdowns. Here's Brooke Fletcher. Brooke 
Yeah, guys, I want to take you back to after that Theo Johnson uh, touchdown. There was a really special moment with James Franklin gathering his players. He said, listen up. I know we got more. Just imagine. And then Daquan Hardy was like, all right, coach, I got you. I hear you. So he had that punt return for a touchdown. And what an incredible moment. He met him over here just celebrating with him. He is all smiles on this sidelines, guys. Keziah Izzard came across early. This is that moment we saw a moment ago. Yeah. Embraces the high standard of competing for championships here at Penn State. Talking about James Franklin, who you saw on the sideline a moment ago. Tony Rojas and Zariah Fisher with the tackle on that running play. And uh, how much does he care, by the way, last week, by week? So there was the ones against the ones in practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Wednesday night, he flew to Connecticut, had a recruiting visit in Connecticut on Thursday, New Jersey on Thursday, Florida on Friday, back home Friday night, and then saw games of recruits Saturday, Jake, in Connecticut and New Jersey both. These coaches, I mean, I don't know if they get enough credit for how much time. This is a 24-7, 365-day job with the transfer portal and NIL. Recruiting's really never finished. And the way you just laid it out right there just shows you James Franklin how much he cares about the program. Ahmad Haston, keeper, quarterback keeper. That is a first down. We heard a little bit earlier from LeVar Arrington, a famous pass number 11 on what Penn State means to him. We've got more sound coming your way in the not too distant future from another former number 11 for Penn State playing for the Dallas Cowboys now, Micah Parsons. Parsons played for James Franklin, of course. Under two minutes left in the third quarter. Penn State has outscored teams 66 to nothing in the third quarter this year. And it's 21 to nothing today. Hastings in trouble. And down he goes on the sack. All right, so speaking of Micah Parsons, let's hear more from a former number 11 Parsons on James Franklin. Whistles blow before the snap. Markers come in. Prior to the ball being snapped, false start. Offense number 80, five-yard penalty, second down. Matt Smith, a transfer tight end from Duke who has not played much this year for UMass. It's cool to hear Micah Parsons say that. We talk about James Franklin traveling all over the country on his recruiting trips, but he sat down with Micah Parsons and his mom and said, hey, this guy, he's going to be a first-round pick one day, and he was there on the draft day as well. Just outside the top 10 when the Cowboys selected him. And here's Devon Ellis. Big TFL for the big defensive tackle. Down goes Karon Lynch Adams. That's the second time today he's been in the backfield, right? I mean, you could just go through the tape throughout the season, and it's a new guy or two guys or three guys every week just stepping up. I mean, we're rotating. The starters are all out here. Now you're in your second and third team, but there's very little drop off, if any. I think what's so impressive too is that this is an aggressive Manny Diaz defense, right? So part of this is the mental side of it. But even as you get in your second and third unit, they're not out of position. Ran the clock down. Oh, Haston hit as he throws, and it's intercepted, and it's a run back, and it's going to be a pick six for Keaton Ellis. Flag has come in on the play. If it stands, it would be, oh, the good puppy dog there. It would be a pick six for Keaton Ellis. The result of the play is an interception by Penn State. During the return, personal foul, legal block below the waist, number 29. 15-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Penn State football, first down and 10. Davion Collins, number 29. By the way, Bo Pergula's in the game now, a quarterback for Penn State. Drew Aller's day is done after three quarters, and Pergula trying to run, just got back to the line of scrimmage on first down. After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, defense number 11. That's his first to the ball game. 
15-yard penalty includes an automatic first down. The key to sustaining a program, something he learned from his mentor, Mickey Adams, is coach, next year's team this year, get young players reps and on-the-job training. And here's a young player with a 21-0 third quarter. Penn State has outscored opponents 87 to nothing in the third quarter this year. We're early in the fourth now with the Nittany Lions, owners of a 49-point lead, a bobbled snap. Drabula has it, trying to make something out of nothing and absorbs a big hit going out of bounds. Ouch. The hit from Gerard Cameron. Everyone checking on, is that a? Audio? Yeah, I think that yeah. was uh, uh, holding a parabolic mic. Yeah. Okay, he's good. Bounce right back up. Ouch. Everything A-OK. -okay. Marker down, pass to the end zone, and another marker down. There are two fouls on the play, fourth against the defense. Yeah. Offside, defense number 30, that penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense number 27. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul, includes an automatic first down. The microphone holder is OK. The microphone apparatus itself appears that it is not OK. Trey Potts is in the game, and the transfer from Minnesota untouched into the end zone. That's, that shows a lot as a veteran presence for the running back room and the offense as a whole. And it means a lot for Trey Potts. Who, Trey Potts just ran it in from two yards out. Big boot by Wosu. Ball went out of bounds on the kickoff. Kicking team number 99. The ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down and 10. Incomplete for Anthony Simpson. Another marker down. I'm going to give it over for a uh, rough in the passer there. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. This is the first carry of the season for Arizona transfer running back Jalen John, number 21 for UMass. He's from Portland, Oregon. He did run for 280 yards and two seasons playing for the Arizona Wildcats. Just to go back to that Big Ten East standings, as expected, the top of the East, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan. That's as good as you're going to get in college football. It's a three-team race, and we will get to find out about Penn State and Ohio State much more next week when Penn State travels to Columbus to take on the Buckeyes. And this is a quarterback keeper. And Great tackle. Yes, absolutely. That is Zion Tracy, freshman from Hempstead, New York. Just look at the technique right here. Freshman out in space, cornerback. Manny Diaz said what he loves about this secondary is, you know, some guys go in to tackle because they have to. But whether it's Zion Tracy there, or Kalen King, Johnny Dixon, he said, these guys, these corners, they like to get in there and mix it up. Good example there by the freshman Zion Tracy. You know, they've had other situations where they've been able to get young players reps in games this year for that concept of coaching next year's team this year. Zion Tracy is one of the players yesterday that that Manny Diaz mentioned to us that's developing because of the reps he's received this year. Cam Miller, who's been good today, Jake. Tony Rojas, the pass rusher, Jamel Lyons. This program's in a really good place, man. I mean, they, and, and there's a bunch of sophomores, including your quarterback, your talented backfield, on the offensive side of the football. There is youth that is getting real playing time throughout the season. And, and look, they're contributing to a team that's right there as, as one of the best in the country. They can compete this year, but all the youth will contribute to success in the future as well. And there's some confusion, and on the handoff, the ball is lost. UMass has jumped back on top of it. Jalen John is getting his first game action with the Minutemen. Just looked like operationally, you got three guys. That's not a, not a great picture, right? You got no. three guys crossing over. Sometimes happens with the freshman quarterback in Haston taking the snap. Haston started playing in the back half of the third quarter for UMass.
and more pressure. Someone got blown up on the UMass offensive line on the pressure coming from the Penn State defensive front as that pass went to George Johnson. I think that was Keon Wiley, 32, the linebacker. Look at the timing of this. Thing. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, Jalen John, I yeah. mean, he put his body on the line to pick up the blitz. Yeah, clearly skipped it off the ground, but they do a good job of timing the blitz. Like, they're not, they're not waiting for the ball to be snapped. He was full speed at the line of scrimmage as soon as the ball left the center's hands. Illegal substitution. 12 players in formation on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Goes from fourth and six to fourth and 11. We had a good chat with Don Brown earlier this week. He was on the staff that won the FCS National Championship at UMass in 1998. He was the head coach when they played in 2008 for the National Championship and lost in the FCS title game. And now in his third go around on the staff, second time as head coach. Penn State offense on the field with 10.45 remaining in the game. Leading UMass 56-0, the final non-conference game for a Big Ten in 2001, winning the national title. Penn State trying to do the over 40, under 10 allowed statistical performance this year. Don Brown was a defensive coordinator and James Franklin an offensive coordinator together for two seasons on the staff at Maryland. Tank Smith is in the game now at running back. Of course, before he got to the Big Ten to be defensive coordinator for five years at Michigan. See this play here. Big hole for Tank Smith. This is a real opportunity here for Tank Smith. And Smith is forced out of bounds by Michael Opong. Tank Smith has 102 career rushing yards in his time at Penn State. Five foot seven, 230 pounds. He fought to move the chains on third down the play before, so maybe he was a little tired. Big tanks aren't known for speed. Come on, Tank, <laughs> kick it in the extra gear, baby. Great run. Tanks are known for running things over and smashing them. Yeah, and he did that on third down. Turned the legs, moved the chains. Redshirt senior, 102 career rushing yards. He just picked up 39 on the last run, and then Perpula will take it all the way into the end zone to finish off the drive. If they use Perpula in some wildcat situations, I mean, that's a really darn good run for a quarterback. That's his strength. It's not Drew Aller's strength. You know, I wonder if Yersich builds some packages to get Prabula on the field. He told us how much he likes him as a quarterback and a leader and how yes. much he means to the program. But he brings a different element that uh, Aller doesn't really bring. And how much the program means to him. He's from York, Pennsylvania. And instead of Gabe Wosu, it looks like Alex Felkins will kick off now. Is a return by Sean Harris Jr. Following the conference, I feel very confident that that will be eight straight Big Ten championships to come out of these three. Of course, two in the college football playoff last year. One thing to note, it's a new kickoff in Columbus next week. Okay, Michigan's traveling here to Beaver Stadium in November. That is a new kickoff. It is not a night game whiteout. That is a big difference, all right? The, the night game whiteout is one of the toughest environments in college football. It's still going to be rocking here in the stadium, but it's a 12 p.m. kickoff instead of a 6 p.m. kickoff. There's a pass to Anthony Simpson, and Simpson is forced out of the bounds around the 24-yard line. The whiteout was three weeks ago, yep. just to your point, and it was a shutout win over Iowa for Penn State. As a matter of fact, Penn State has shut out more conference opponents since 2015, seven, than anyone else in FBS. That's a great stat. It's a point of pride for any defense. Yes. If you could come out without a stain on the scoreboard, a shutout. And especially against a conference opponent who you're going to exactly. see year in, year Even out. Even better. Even better. Chance for a shutout 
That is very much obviously on the table here. A long pass finally got over there to Mark Pope. Think about what you're saying to the other team, conference too. Right. Hey, we didn't even get a point. Oh, what do you mean? We didn't we couldn't get a field goal? The, the shutouts are just that it's that extreme end of, of absolute and utter dominance. And the dominance of that particular game three weeks ago was not limited to just no points, but also only 76 total yards in that game for Iowa. As a matter of comparison, by the way, it's 75 right now for UMass, although they almost lost some. Hastings was able to escape pressure and scramble to pick up positive yardage up to the 39. That, that Iowa game, just shy over 30 offensive plays for Iowa as well, right? right? There's some games where your special teams, your core four special teamers get about 30 plays. And really what that means, they are, they're forcing three and outs constantly. They're getting off the field. So at this point in the season, I mean, your starters, your ones and twos, they're extremely fresh. To that point, we'll explain more after this snap and play here for UMass, which is a short run. So we brought that up to Manny Diaz yesterday, Jake, and he said less wear and tear is a real thing. Their snap counts are way down. First five games last year, 72 plays per game. First five games this year, Penn State's only defending 56 plays yeah. per game. So about 20 plays less total per game through this point in the season. But really, it's it's mid-50, 56 plays per game. That you're defending, right, Penn State. But you're so deep, you're rotating guys in. Your starters are probably averaging closer to 40 a game because right. you can rotate guys. I mean, there is a lot of rotation right now to that point. Run for Jalen John. It is a first down. And, and coming off a of bye week, okay, so, so what's a bye week like, right? A lot of times you think bye week, it's a chance to get your body right. It's a physical game. You can rest. Well, actually, this team's been so dominant. Franklin told us they spent a couple practices last week ones on ones. They wanted good on good. They were already so fresh. They took it as a chance to... to continue to elevate and challenge themselves. I mean, the other thing about rotating bodies, it doesn't just keep you fresh, but Manny Diaz told us yesterday it's great for morale. Because there are a lot of players on this team who can play, who deserve to play, and are being rewarded with the opportunity to play. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you know, there's seasons where some guys, you know, it's the it's the thankless job of the scout team or, you know, third on the depth chart. You do a lot of the dirty work in practice and, and just it's the way it shakes out. You don't always get to do it on the field. But again, Penn State so dominant, they've been able to get their third and fourth and fifth teamers in there. Everyone's getting some experience. Keon Wiley, Jake Wilson, Devon Townley, some of the players who are in here at the end of the game. Number 13, Tony Rojas, along with 32. Keon Wiley both in on that tackle. Just take a look at that picture. How many blue jerseys around the ball carrier? It's five or six or seven guys, right, all within a three or four yard radius of the ball carrier. That's been the, the theme of this defense throughout the game, throughout the season. Once they read who's got the ball, their hats are flying and pursuing to it. 14, Tyrese Mills at safety. 10, Makai Flowers at safety, also in the game as well. Elliott Washington the second. He's up top at corner, number 16. Flush from the pocket. Haston, he's got some room out in front of him, will run out of bounds. Uh, look, the only, one of the, one of the weaker points when you're playing man-to-man -man coverage and you don't get pressure, the quarterback run is something that can hurt you. Now, the starting D-line, they are good at getting pressure. But that's an example of if, if you if you aren't disciplined with your rush lanes and you're in man-to-man -man coverage, you are vulnerable to a quarterback run. Now next week, that's not what McCord does. Offside. Offside. Probably telling him, hey, be aware. You know, stay disciplined in your rush lanes. Right. Stay disciplined with your assignment. He's probably saying it. They're getting close to field goal range. Like, hey, hey Keon. We all got our hands on this thing. We'd like to keep it a shutout. But, okay, so it, it won't hurt you with McCord. McCord is not a dangerous runner. That's not what he's known. But where where it really comes to play is, you know, Talia Tagovailoa, Maryland's quarterback. Right. He can run, especially Michigan. 
J.J. McCarthy. That's one of his big time strengths. He's a big runner. I think those are all outstanding points because again as we said at the top of the broadcast today is the final test before the second half of the season and the schedule then is much more difficult with Ohio State next week. Maryland shortly thereafter Michigan after that I can't wait I can't wait I mean this defense you and I've talked about it it's just yeah. so fun to watch we even told Manny it's like man it's an almost an honor to watch the way yeah. you guys play play defense but what's Ohio State known for it's one of the best offenses still in college football and, and in the Big Ten Conference so it'll be a good test good measuring stick for the Buckeye offense and this Penn State defense measuring stick I'm underselling it man that's going to be a, a great great game a measuring <laughs> stick I take it back don't tweet at me be a great game that is two of the top six in the nation there was some pre snap movement on third down and one for UMass I'll start offense number 72 last minute of the game third down and six for UMass Here's pressure. Caleb Artis forces Haston out of the pocket, and it's incomplete. The freshman Haston with the pass incomplete. Looking for Sean Harris Jr., and UMass turns it over on downs. And that does it. There's the shutout. Manny Diaz. Crack a smile. Is he going to get a smile from Manny Diaz, man? He's tough. Everywhere he's been, Middle Tennessee is a defensive coordinator. Mississippi State is a D coordinator. Texas is a defensive coordinator. Miami defensive coordinator and then head coach. The man always puts great defenses on the field, but statistically speaking, nothing better than what has transpired in the first half of the season here at Penn State. But to our conversation yesterday when I asked, is it time to start comparing? And he said, it, it's not time to start comparing to to anything he's done in the past yet because to our point things are going to change today was the last test and the LSAT and the MCAT are the uh, tests still left to take well and really I think he knows the, the goal isn't to have the number one defense in the country at this point in the season the goal is to go to Columbus next week and come out with a win the goal is to have team success I think James Franklin and Manny Diaz and Mike Yursich and this this entire Penn State team believes this this year has a chance to be really really special so I think their eyes are on and their mind is set on a team goal of a conference title and competing for a national title so the show of respect between James Franklin and Don Brown Penn State has won 11 consecutive games by 14 plus points